Hello, I'm Kitsune Fuzzy and welcome back to the second entry of this untitled Balls game devlog. As mentioned in my previous video, I don't want to get hit by feature creep again. But I've been already tempted by a single comment. Getting mad lover flashbacks with that ball. I mean, I had transformations in one of my earlier attempts back then, but I have to stay strong this time. Unless, of course, I find a really... And I mean really good reason to add transformations to the game. This will have to stay out for now. Maybe if I do a second game sometime in the future, I could add more stuff like that. But for now I will have to start with the things needed for a minimum viable product. So, what do we need first? That is right! We need a goal that we can place in the levels so we can jump from one to the next level. I will do scripting for the simple objects in Blueprint. To me it just doesn't seem worth the extra C++ compile times for such simple objects. But I have to update some C++ code for the ball to behave correctly with the goal. And after a bit of tinkering I got what I wanted. Now I just needed to add the simple dummy UI to pop up and we got the core functionality running. Nice! I'm not yet sure about the design for the goal, so I just started with something simple. I plan to redo object graphics when I have the visuals for the first levels ready, so I can then make the objects fit in and make sure they will be clearly visible. Now I wanted to add a checkpoint system, where only the last used checkpoint is active. So another blueprint actor, connecting a few noodles, and graphics come later, and from what I can see it worked first try. But the problem on this map is we can't fall off the map or lose in any other way, so we need a new map. Next I wanted to override Unreal's fell out of bounds function for my balls class. But I noticed it doesn't work with the way I split up the objects in the ball blueprint for the drop shadow, so I needed to make the drop shadow from the first video a second actor that follows the player on its own. And now I could use the fell out of bounds function correctly. And the checkpoints worked. Nice! After this I wanted to add some interactive things to the game. First idea was cannons that help you around the level. It's a very simple mesh and a few animations later I could go right to scripting. I ran into a problem with the velocity limit I had added to the ball in part 1. So I removed it for now and things seem to work fine. What else does every platforming game need? Automatic camera perspectives in some areas, of course. So I made another blueprint for trigger zones, they had moved the camera to a set view. There were a few hiccups with the controls and changing view at first, but nothing that couldn't be solved. Instead of just automatically firing cannons, I then thought I should maybe add rotating cannons where you have to manually fire. For the most part it was just copying and pasting the original cannons, plus adding rotation within limits when the player is inside, and firing on the button press. I ran into a small problem where blueprints and C++ script were fighting for input control, but that was easily resolved by calling the C++ part through blueprint. As the final thing for today, I'm adding pipes that automatically move you from one point to another. I followed a tutorial on how to create automatic spline meshes, so that I just need to drag out my curves and can have working pipes in any way I like immediately. I changed a few bits uh, of this tutorial to make it work better for my case, but if you're interested I will put the link to the tutorial down below in the video description. I wanted those pipes to have a glass-like material, but there seemed to be a problem with the depth... the depth... wait, wait, wait. Depth. Yeah, that. I'm German, I can't pronounce that, I'm sorry, but that's how it is. <laughs> yeah, so to fix that problem I switch from a translucent to an additive shader. Maybe I'll adjust that later when I place it in actual levels, but for now at least it does the job. The pipes themselves, of course, like all my programming, worked immediately in my fourth or fifth try or so, I didn't count. And now it's your turn! Let me know in the comments if there is something you'd like to see in the game! 
And if you like the video, leave a like. And if you don't want to miss the next devlog entries, make sure to subscribe. And thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye!